Look at verse 6. He's Alpha and Omega. That's first and last letter, right? Thus, he is the beginning and the end. So he is all the way there at the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, this is great, I will give unto him that is a thirst. So anyone who's thirsty, God's going to give him what? Of the fountain of the water of life freely. God's going to give him a fountain of the water of life. So there's a fountain of the water of life and he gives it freely. If there's one thing up in heaven that God gives for free, it's that water of life. And it's free. Now the thing is this, is that if you go back to Revelation chapter 7, I don't know if you, uh, if you recall that, but if you look at Revelation 7, it's plural, fountains. So the idea is this, is that up in heaven, it's not just going to be one singular fountain, as you might see. It's going to be many fountains. Now, if uh, people want to go to Yosemite to see the beautiful geysers, imagine this thing spurting out where you see all over up in heaven. You see nothing yet. All right, but anyway, this is the water of life, and it's free. Now, if you look at the tree of life, that's not free, actually. If you go to Revelation 20, go to Revelation 20. Go to Revelation chapter 20. Uh, not 20, 22, excuse me. Chapter 22. Chapter 22. Now, notice what he says at verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. See that? These are works. It's not free. That they may have right to the what? tree of life. Look, the tree of life is not free, but the water of life is free over here. Wait a minute. It was free a long time ago, the tree of life. Go to Genesis 2. Genesis 2. Long, long time ago, it used to be free. But then something happened that the Lord did not make it free. Something happened there. All right. So go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2. All right, what happened here? There was something, a sin, that Eve did that the Lord had to say that you're going to have to work for it this time. By the way, mankind did not have to work for the fruit that he ate during the Garden of Eden, right? It was all free. But now the Lord involved works at Revelation 22 because something happened that what Eve did. All right, go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Now notice what God said to Adam. Look at verse 16. The Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest what? Freely eat. Freely eat. It used to be free, but Eve did something, which is why we take the word of God seriously and don't call us a cultist for taking every word of God seriously. It was so serious, the Lord changed it now. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. She, did, she used the NIV. That's what happened. That's right. Eve used the NIV, and using the NIV was enough where God changed it where it wasn't free. Amen. All right, look at Genesis chapter 3. We'll read uh, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent... Okay, so she's trying to say what God says at verse 1, right? Yea, hath God said... So what did God really say? Eve saying at verse 2, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Wait a minute. She dropped a word here. What did she drop? Freely. That's an important word. I think that the Lord took very... I think the Lord did something with that. Why? Because in Revelation 22, He says, You got to do the commandments now. You got to do the commandments to take this tree of life. This ain't free. Over here is free. How about that? So this is based on a commandment. It's a work system over here. So if you're a person who lives during this time period or who is born throughout that time where God's setting up eternity, then this is what you have to do. But uh, Christians, obviously, who are saved in Jesus Christ, uh, we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith. That's been a long time ago taken care of on our part. But then if there's going to be people who are born and live during this time, they have to do this. That's the idea.
Why? Because the tree of life, they need life. If you, uh, we're going to find out later. We're not going to really read into that. But if you keep reading Revelation 22, it talks about healing. See that? But our bodies are immortal. It's eternal. We, our bodies are changed at the rapture. See? So that's why this has no application to us. It's applying to those people at that time period. That's dispensationalism. It's not talking about from people long time ago, like us today. All right. But the water of life is free. That's the thing that's free. And the Christian can apply that to himself. And uh, if there's a verse you want to apply as doctrinal for the Christian church, it's that verse. Look at John 4 now. Look at the book of John, chapter 4. Why? Because it's Jesus Christ over here. Jesus Christ, He grants us the water of life if we, we would accept Him for our salvation. So the Christian church can claim that promise for herself. Look at John, chapter 4. Look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knewest the what? Is it a gift? So it's not of works. Gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, that would have asked of him, and he would have what? Given thee living water. See that water of life. Look at verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up like a fountain. See that? Into everlasting life. You got that? All right. And guess what? Verse 15. Sir, give me this water. That's your job. Now give those people the water. Amen? Amen. That's what our preacher here is supposed to do. Amen. Amen? There are people we're supposed to give the water because there are people asking, Sir, give me this water to drink. And guess what? It's free. Yep. By the way, we're the one paying for it, right? We're the one paying for it so that you can get something free and it's phenomenal that people still reject that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only some, someone's mind who's totally blinded by Satan, filled with devils, can reject such an offer. Right. Man, they need the hope of the glorious gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. All righty, let's go back. Revelation chapter 21. Amen, amen. All right. Y'all a little excited, you know, talking about eternity? What a great day, right? Amen. Be a beautiful time. What a time, what a time. All right, Revelation chapter 21. We'll read verse 7. All right, and we'll close it here. This will be our final verse. He that overcometh, so a person has to overcome, shall inherit all things. Look at that, all things. A Christian is promised uh, the inheritance, right? Now, we're not going to turn to these verses for time's sake, all right? I'm trying to respect the clock. But if you go to Galatians chapter 5 and then 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, yeah, 1 Corinthians 3 and Galatians 5, the verse shows that Christian church have the inheritance and it's all things. Yeah. Now, if God puts all things here at verse 7, that's describing what? All of verses 1 through 7, that new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, everything in it, we inherit it. How about that? So even though our home is over here, that doesn't mean that we have no access to these two places. Can you imagine, like, you're in your mansion in New Jerusalem, and then you're like, I want to go jump over to a Saturn or a Venus or go like 12, bill uh, 12 billion light years all the way out there because it's going to stretch out endlessly, and you can fly over there like Superman and then all the thing that Star Wars and all these people talk about, they'll never reach the glimpse in the borderline of it. And then all of us will inhabit all of eternity and we're like, you know, maybe I'll, uh, I'm kind of reminiscent of where I used to live at San Jose, California, you know. It's been like uh, 10 million years, you know. I didn't want to visit it. Maybe I want to take a glimpse of it. So you go back down and you visit over there and then here's the earth, right? Some of you are like shaking your head like, no, I'm going to go to New Jerusalem, right? I saw some of you doing that, yeah. But hey, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time where we inherit all things. Yes. What a time. It goes endlessly. Eons and eons of eternity. And I will be his God. So 
if you overcome, the condition notice here is overcoming. Now I included the Christian here, but let me show you a double application. Remember, uh, in Revelation, you have to believe in double application. I taught you that. I'm not going to go through it over here. So the condition is overcoming. If you overcome, you inherit all things and what? I will be his God. So then God will become your God and he shall be my son. You become a child of God. All right, so we see over here that there are two applications. One we see over here concerning the tribulation application. Well, let's first look at the Christian application. Look at 1 John 5, 1 John 5. 1 John 5. So this verse will apply to two people. It will apply to people who rely on works for salvation and then those who rely on faith for salvation. And those who rely on faith for salvation is the Christian church. Those who rely on works is going to be at the different time periods. It's definitely not today. If you rely on works for your salvation today, you're going, you're going straight to hell. So it's only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ today. But in other time periods and dispensations, they have to do works for salvation. All right, which I'm not going to expound on. All right, just keep up, uh, look at our playlist. Go to our playlist on YouTube and Revelation, and then just watch the whole thing, all right? It's done in a series. 1 John 5. Now, notice what the Bible says about the overcoming. Verse 4, for whatsoever is what? Born. Born of God overcometh the world, and this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our what? Faith. Faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but what? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. See? All right, so who qualifies for overcoming here? Can the Christian church qualify? Yes or no? Yes, because the reason why is because of faith, right? So because we follow that condition of faith, we qualify. Now look at the second category who qualify for overcoming. Go to Revelation 2. Revelation 2 to 3. There are people who do not believe in dispensational salvations. So then because they don't, they deny Revelation 2 and 3 having tribulation doctrine. No, uh, you got to realize that you got to rightly divide. 2 and 3 has doctrinal verses that are tribulation con content. Look at the overcoming here. This is not faith. Okay, look at this over here. Look at Revelation chapter 3, for example. We're going to look at chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Look at the context here of overcoming. It's your walk at verse 4. See that? You have to walk worthy. Now, we can all confess this a lot of times our Christian walk is pretty lousy, right, sadly? So see that? So that doesn't apply to us. If this is not works, I don't know what you're going to say about verse 2. Verse 2, it just said works, didn't it? Okay, so don't try to say this is a... This is a Christian salvation by faith alone. No, you're not reading. It said works. Okay. So you see over here, now we see a application that's not the church. Revelation 2 to 3 shows a tribulation application. Or we can put over here, tribulation application works. So this is a future doctrinal end time application here. So these people... They have to do works for salvation to overcome. They can qualify. We qualify because based on faith. That's why we qualify. So thus, that's how we inherit all things.